Hello YouTube. What you see here is a very rudimentary test bench that I'm testing some parts on that will be going into a uh, little uh, micro ATX build that I, uh, I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I've never really found the time to uh, really set this stuff up again and then uh, get a proper case uh, that's not too expensive to fit all these parts. So what you see here, I'll just uh, move the camera over a little bit so you can see what's uh, on the test bench here. We have an ASRock motherboard. This is the 775i65G, which is a very interesting board. It uses the Intel 865 chipset, so that means we have AGP support, we don't have PCI Express, and we don't have DDR2 support, but we do have socket 775, uh, which ASRock has sort of uh, been toying around with a little bit with the BIOS. It actually supports Core 2 Duo C CPUs with 1066 and 800 FSB. And it even supports the first generation of the Core 2 Quad, which is the uh, Q6000 range or Kensfield. So that's pretty neat too. I don't have a Core 2 Quad because I need a different kind of memory. Uh, I might give it a shot anyway. I think I, I did order a Core 2 Quad Q6600 at some point, but I don't know if I still have it or whatever. But uh, right now it's rocking a Core 2 Duo E4600, I believe running at uh, 2.6 gigahertz, 2 gigs of DDR400 memory CL3, and uh, a very beefy graphics card, this is the uh, HIS Radeon HD2600 XT with the IceQ Turbo Cooler, which is very neat. And uh, that Wi-Fi card you see down there, you know, that little thing, that's just because my Ethernet cable won't reach all the way to this bench here, so... So there's that. Hard drive we're using here is a Western Digital Raptor, this is a 150 gig drive, I'm just using a regular SATA DVD burner drive. So that's basically all there is to it. Um, there in the back, by the way, you can still see the power supply. That's something I found in uh, in a thrift shop. So that cost me two fifty. <laughs> it's an Entech Earthwatch four thirty watt uh, PSU, which is uh, plenty for this system. So uh, yeah. Also, something that I wasn't really expecting is that the uh, delivery man this morning was uh, quite uh, early. This is the case that I'll be putting this in. I forgot the exact model number, but it's on the box. So it's the Corsair Carbide 88R, which is a micro ATX case that I think looks very neat. Nothing too uh, flashy. I wanted to go with the Fractal Design P1100, I think it was the name. The Fractal Design Core 1100, whatever. Um, but there is a huge problem with the drive mounting system in that case, and uh, there's no cable management at all. And uh, I've got a lot of very long cables on that Antec PSU, so I can't really make it look uh, too tidy in there. So I decided to offer this case instead. It was the uh, the other option that's for under 50 bucks eight micro ATX cases from a reputable brand. So, well, there we have it. So that's basically the introduction. I'm now just going to put everything together and then uh, we're going to see what uh, if she actually wants to boot up for the first time and that I've actually done everything properly and there we are this is the case that we're going to be building in it's just a little intermediate clip here it is very compact as you can see this is the size of my hand so it is indeed not very tall at all it is reasonably wide on this side, <coughs> we do have a cutout for cable management, so that's good. This is what the back looks like. We've got an exhaust fan there. It's all fine and dandy. Quite thin steel, but it's all painted, so that's good. And uh, we do have a side panel. So we can show off what's on the inside. It's not really all that important, but uh, you know, it came with the case, so why not? Well, let's just uh, open it up and take a quick peek inside. Pretty nice thumb screws. They're not captive, but that's okay. Quite light, but it's quite rigid, and that's good. It's not bad at all for this price. We've got a toolless drive bay for the optical drive, so that's good. 
Did they just really... Wow. Or is it supposed to go out the other side? I mean, it's great that they include an accessory box, but it's... Shouldn't it actually be accessible? Because it's not. So that's nice. Well, I'll try it from Beerus' side anyway, but uh, yeah. This is the inside of the case. It's all very standard fare here. I think it should be a, should be a good fit. So, uh, yeah. We'll have to see how that goes. Right, so now I'm just going to start building and uh, we'll uh, take a look uh, at what it looks like when it's done. Alright, there she is, the finished product. So I guess the last thing we should do is peel the plastic. And I forgot a plastic on the inside, so you get a double bonus. And you can also start to see how it's all looking in there. There we go. Now I can put the tunnel back on. It uh, looks to have a little bit of a uh, smoky vibe going, as you can see here. I think that's looking pretty sharp, despite of course the ketchup and mustard cables, but then again, this build is combi combining parts that were all available around 2007 to 2008. And in fact, the specification that this system has were absolutely something that I dreamed of back in 2007. Because back then I had to run with a Celeron 1.7 from like 2001, with 256 megs of RAM on XP Service Pack 2, with an XGI Valeri video card. And that was just, in hindsight, absolutely horrible. In 2008 I got an Athlon 64X2 system because I started, uh, or was in the... Uh, third class of high school, the third year, we don't have special names for that here, we'll just call it the third one, or the third year, whatever. Uh, then we got a new computer, that was the Athlon 6 Forex 2, with 2 gigs of RAM and Windows Vista. Uh, but yeah, so now it's actually uh, in one piece, let's test it and see if it actually works. And there she is. That's a good sign. I decided to add another 120mm fan that I'd laying around, add a, a Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 fan laying around, so I decided to use that as an intake fan. Let's hope that it actually works. The video on this board takes a while, so just waiting for that to happen. Plus I'm using an HDM or a DVI to HDMI adapter. Because I don't have a DVI monitor as handy. And this uh, GPU only has DVI, so. It's not doing a whole lot. Right. <laughs> so it actually booted up in the meantime, but we didn't get any video. Well, that's great. Because it's supposed to uh, show up on that monitor there. Right. I'm just gonna press the power button once, and it shuts down. Good old Windows XP. I want to put Vista on this, but uh, I couldn't do that straight away. I noticed that this board doesn't like that. It won't boot from RW discs that contain Vista, and it won't boot from USB that uh, contains Vista. And I don't have any blanks uh, DVDRs, so I'll just upgrade my XP to Vista later on, I suppose. Or stick to XP, who knows. But uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Round two. I should also close the door.
The video connectors are quite a tight fit in there because I've propped the video card up to, to be not in a very sagging position so that means that there's not a whole lot of room for the adapter to fit in there yep there it goes by the way don't be alarmed by the fact that there's actually an HDMI cable running right there that's for my main computer so I don't want to uh, pull it back out there and uh, loop it around every single time I need to get an HDMI back here, so... Got plenty of spare cables. And there we have XP, which is a clean install. The only thing that I haven't actually installed yet is the uh, video driver, because it, I needed to download that, and it... Uh, <laughs> the web servers from HIS that actually still host the correct drivers for this card, the current AMD ones are shit, uh, was very, very slow like 150k download speed so that's not good so that would that took about half an hour to do so in the meantime I built a system so so there's that um so that's basically it for this video this was basically the uh, the build process more or less just getting the system up and running and I forgot to plug in my keyboard very handy as well but uh, at least the system is working it's in one piece and it's hella loud, so we gotta do some uh, configuration in the BIOS, but uh, that's something for another video. I just wanted to show you this uh, little build that I wanted to do with these parts. I had these laying around for months and months on end, and I never really got to do anything interesting with them. So now I finally have a good case uh, to put them in, because I think Micro ATX and ATX case looks like trash. So, uh, that's a optical drive. Yep, even that works. Amazing. So yeah, well, there you have it. That's the uh, little Micro ATX uh, ASRock build done with the Core 2 Duo and the HD2600 XT AGP with 256 megabytes of RAM, I think. Pretty decent card. So uh, we're going to have some fun with this in another video. And for now, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I thank you all for watching.